Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' gripping book. In human roar, Clayton visualizes Porter and Philander attacked, bleeding, perhaps dead. He rushes headlong into the jungle, stumbling, tripping, crashing through the thorn and brush. He plunges deeper, presses farther, smashes onward. He comes to a jungle trail that leads to the water hole. He stops. Glances up the trail, peers into the tangled mass of vines that is the jungle, listening. The distant roar comes from beyond the matted wall. Heedless of piercing, tearing thorns, he plunges straight ahead. Again he stops. He strains his ears, listening for that cry he dreads to hear. For the past moments that seemed like centuries, there's been no outcry from Porter and Philanda. A horrible, strangling fear grips him. What if he should be too late? The thought hurls him forward. Desperation lends the speed of frenzy to his feet. Meanwhile, back at the hut, Jane Porter, anxiously staring through the latticed bars of the window, sees her father and Philander approaching the hut. The thing! Jane! Jane! Daddy! Daddy! Oh, I'm so glad you're safe. I've been nearly frantic with worry. Where's Cecil? Did you see him? No, Jane. Did he go out? Well, he went out after you. We were in the hut when we heard the lion roar. Then we heard you calling, and Cecil took a rifle and started out after you. Oh, very strange that we didn't meet but, him. But how did you get here? A most amazing thing, my dear. Her Philander here interrupted my discourse to tell me that a lion... Yes, yes Daddy, but the lion, did he leave her? We were walking along when the lion growled. I turned and saw him following us. I immediately urged on your father... The necessity of speedily removing ourselves from its immediate vicinity. Yeah, and made a most undignified spectacle of yourself, Philander. My dear, I was myself forced to accelerate my locomotion in order to complete my discourse. See here, Professor Porter. You mean to stand there and tell me... Oh, never care. mind all that. If Cecil didn't get the lion, how did you escape? Oh, well, as I was saying, when Philander interrupted me, I ran to catch up with him when suddenly something picked me up from the ground and I found myself in a most undignified position, hanging precariously to the limb of a tree. I... Uh, I, of course, retain complete control of all my faculties. Uh, yes, you... Uh, eh, uh, uh, what did you say, Philander? Nothing. Go on, go uh, on. Uh, yes, I will. I looked about, dear, and to my utter amazement, saw Philander likewise clinging to a somewhat higher branch. I did not have complete control of my faculties, and I admit that I stumbled and fell. But the same godlike creature who rescued your father from certain death also hauled me to safety. But who was he? What was he like? What did he say? Uh, why, uh, why, uh, he... why, now that you mention it, dear, he didn't say anything. And, and I'm not sure that I can adequately and accurately describe him. He's a splendid proportion. The, um... Uh, uh, I might say, the living embodiment of a Greek statue. And, and while I am not a large man, dear, it says much for his physical prowess that he lifted me as I might lift a babe in arms. Well, is he white? Black? Oh, dear, couldn't you tell? He's clean of feature, and uh, as you will understand, I did not, under the stress of existing circumstance, examine him with a scientific attitude... I feel, nevertheless, that he is of the higher order. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, when Philander first saw the lion and started running... Oh, now, Daddy, I can't think of a better thing to do than to run from a lion. See here, Professor Archimedes Q. Porter. Are you still trying to claim that you were only running away from that brute in order to continue talking to uh, me? Philander was running, as I said, my dear. Are you accusing me of cowardice? Professor, the time has arrived when patience becomes a crime. And mayhem appears garbed in the mantle of virtue. Oh, Mr. Philander, uh, cut, cut, Mr. Philander, you forget yourself. I forget nothing, Professor Archimedes Q. Porter. But believe me, sir, I'm tottering on the verge of forgetfulness as to your exalted position in the world of science and your gray hair. Ah, see here, skinny Philander. If you're looking for a scrap, peel off your coat. And come out behind the hut, and I'll punch your head just as I did 16 years ago in the alley back of Porky Evans' barn. Bless my soul. Why, Ark. Ark, how good that sounds. 
When you're human, Ark, I love you. But somehow it seems as though you'd forgotten how to be human in the last 20 years. Well, thank heaven. Maybe you two can stop your bickering for a little while now. Here I am, trying to find out about this, 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 well, whatever it was that saved your life. Yes, 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 my love. A most tremendous of me. My fault, James. I lost my temper. Well, now, now, don't you get into another argument as to whose fault it was. Oh, dear, but what's going to happen to Stubble? Why doesn't he come back? Instead of standing there arguing, we should be out looking for him. Uh, yes, yes, you're quite right. Quite right, my dear, quite right. Uh, I will start now and conduct a search with the utmost diligence. But you were just lost in the jungle yourself. How can you expect to find your way? I forgot to mention, dear, that this same... Uh, I can think of no suitable word uh, other than... Gentlemen, yes, this same gentleman who rescued us from the lion led us back to within sight of the hut. Then, then he must be Tarzan of the Apes. Uh, 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 what's that, my dear? If he led you back here, he must be the one who left a notice on the door of a hut. How stupid of me. Of course. That is the solution. And why, yes, 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 precisely. <laughs> but what about Clinton? Really, Professor, I don't at all like the idea of leaving Jane here unprotected in case some of the mutineers should return. Oh, I was about to tell you. The ship has gone. Well, what's gone? Captain, the ship gone? Gone, did you say? Gone. Vanished. Come here. Look for yourself. Dear, 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 dear. Yes. And the ship has gone with the treasure. Dear, dear me. The lost science in general, and archaeology in particular, uh, will be the most regrettable, the most unfortunate, absolutely irreparable. Well, I, for one, am glad to be rid of the ship and those terrible men. Of course. With those piratical villains in charge of the ship, the situation was decidedly uncomfortable. One could never be quite sure in one's mind as to what their next actions would be. But no, 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 dear. The loss of the ship is not nearly such a catastrophe as the loss of the treasure. The professor, without a ship, how could we have removed the treasure? Well, one thing at a time, one thing at a time, Philander. How often must I tell you that concentration of the mental faculty? Oh, I thought you were powerful, Do you think if we fire a shot? Uh, no, 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 no. Clayton might be unnecessarily alarmed, my love. Your previous suggestion that we search for him has my hearty approval. Uh, now, now, where are those rifles, eh? Ah, eh, ah, here's one. Yes. And uh, if you will take that other rifle, Philander, All right. yes, All right. and be careful you do not shoot yourself. Oh, nothing. I, I will arm myself with this one. Uh, it seems to be loaded. Be careful, Professor. Be careful. Tarzan, from the lofty branches of a gnarled and twisted tree, watches Clayton, utterly exhausted, his sense of direction gone, thrashing about in the tangled maze of underbrush. Curiosity outweighs the ape man's feeling of contempt for this stranger who violates all the laws of jungle prudence. Never before has Tarzan seen anything, not even Tanto the elephant, deliberately chase a lion. He shakes his head. Had it been earlier in the morning or later in the evening, the man surely would have fallen prey to the lightning-like stroke of Numa, the lion, or the death-dealing lunge of Sheeta, the leopard. Satan leans his rifle against the bowl of a tree, mops his forehead, and glances about him. The impenetrable walls of tree, thorn, vine, and scrub hem him in securely in the tiny clearing. In his anxiety to rescue Porter and Philander, he has blundered, broken, and thrust his way in, and now he's hopelessly lost. There's a crackling of brush behind him. He whirls. sees nothing. But Tarzan has caught a glimpse of Sheeta the leopard. He hears the soft, bending grasp, a stealthy pad of feet. He glances back at Cleeton. He wonders why the young white man's not warned. Can it be that he's failed to hear? Never before has Tarzan known Sheeta to be so clumsy, so careless in his stalking. A ripple passes under the spotted silken sheen of the leopard's coat. The muscles, strong as steel traps, tighten, tense, stiffen. Tarzan watches. Sheeta's ears flatten, tail straightens. The tip of the brute's tail twitches. The twitch that signalizes the charge. Tarzan's call of warning splits the threatening silence of the jungle. Sheeta crouches motionless. The baleful glare dies from Sheeta's eyes. Gives way to a glint of fear. The standing hairs ridge down the leopard's spine. 
Let him be a witch. She can stand petrified. With a mingled cough of fear and anger, she does heel between legs, slinks off into the jungle. 